Cameron Payne, man. You traded Patrick Beverly for this guy. Patrick Beverly stinks. Let's keep it a buck like a dollar store. Yeah, we like the vibes. We like this energy. We like this trash talk. He fits good in Philly, all that stuff. But let's talk about the on-court product. Cameron Payne is miles better than Patrick Beverly. And we lacked so much scoring off the bench all of this season and every season, really. But our bench, again, was terrible this season. And I have to credit Daryl Morey for at least going into the trade deadline and saying, you know, I'm not going to trade my favorite player of all time, Tobias Harris. But I will at least try to make some moves to improve this bench, who was the which was the worst bench in the NBA this season before the trade deadline. So I got to give Daryl Morey his props for trading Patrick Beverly for Cameron Payne because Philly loved Patrick Beverly. And, you know, the fact that Daryl Morey thinks fans are stupid and doesn't care what they say worked to his benefit this time because he was like, I don't care what the fans say. I'm trading Patrick Beverly for Cameron Payne. And it was a good trade. And Cameron Payne, you know, the Sixers break the record for made threes in a game, their own franchise record of 23 threes. And Cameron Payne, lo and behold, is the one that hits it at the towards the end of the game to break the record, giving them 24 made threes. You got to love it. And I know this team is a roller coaster ride. And I know this it's ups and downs, man. And in some games without Joel, it looks like the worst roster in the entire NBA. But I just have to give Nick Nurse credit because then there's games like this. It helps again that you're playing Liberty Bibbity and Grady Dick. But if you can imagine Joel and B coming back and playing at a high level with Cameron Payne playing like this, Kelly Oubre playing like this, Kyle Lowry being a veteran presence off the bench. Maybe he starts, maybe he doesn't. I don't know what Nick Nurse is going to do. I think he's going to start him, actually. Tyrese Maxey, stud, all-star. What are you going to do when Embiid comes back? Guys, you can't trap Maxey at half court anymore. So his little hater trolls can come out of the woodwork and be like, oh, he only scored nine points. He was seven for 20. He was getting half freaking trapped at half court the whole game. What are you going to do when Joel comes back, man? Someone's in trouble. Someone's in trouble, man. Uh, Buddy Heald, man. Let's talk about Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald has stunk it up for a while now. Um, You know, since he was absolutely cooking right after the trade deadline, I think just this Philly crowd, man, it really it really gets to players when they first get here, and, and the vibes are so high, and you know, shooting a ball and, and scoring is so much like so much like confidence and, and, and comfortability it has so much to do with it. And and vibes just kind of make the ball go in. Buddy Heald is is one of the best three point shooters in the NBA, maybe the best movement shooter in the NBA percentage wise and temps per game wise. And so he was balling beginning of the season, right? Then he has a little bit of a fall off. And he lost his confidence a little bit, man. I saw I, I saw last game, I, saw, I watched him pump fake a wide open one. And I think Nurse probably showed him the film. And he probably said, why aren't you shooting this, man? You know? Look what we had last year. We had, we had pump fake PJ. I named him pump fake PJ because he was supposed to be a corner three-point specialist. And he was pump faking wide open threes the entire season. And Doc Rivers continued to start him continued to play him 40 minutes a game and never told him once, hey, why the hell are you pump faking wide open threes? Shoot the damn ball. We finally have a coach that's looking at players and saying, hey, what are you doing? Shoot the ball. You know what I mean? So I, I just, what I'm trying to say is I think that I, I see the team get a little bit off track, get derailed at times. And you, you have a coach that's that's going in the lab and doing everything he possibly can to try to straighten it out. You know, and so it was nice to see Buddy Heald get his confidence back. Uh, five for seven from the field, three for five from three point range, 13 points for Buddy Heald. Nico Batum, 
Nicholas Batum. Listen, who threw the alley oop to him in the in the first half? NASCAR. Jeff Doughton Jr. Jeff Doughton Jr. coming around turn three. Jeff Doughton Jr. gets a steal and throws an alley oop to 49 year old Nicholas Batum. And he laid it in. I don't think his tippy toes came off the court. His vertical is zero, but he still scored. And, you know, he was five for six from three point range, Nico Batum was, man. And I feel like every time the Raptors cut it to nine, 11, you know, they were hanging around. They were being annoying. Every time we went up 16, they cut it back down to nine or 11. Uh, I feel like Nicholas Batum hit a big time three every time that happened. And Nicholas Batum, again, has stunk since Joel Embiid's been out, you know, and at times in certain games has looked completely useless. He looks like he he's looked like a seven foot PJ Tucker for some of these games, you know? So I think a silver lining in this game is definitely some guys getting their confidence back. Nicholas Batum and Buddy Heald, two of them, uh, because when Joel comes back, quite obviously they are going to be big time pieces and we're going to need them to be confident and to be catch and shoot specialists. So you got Buddy Heald, you got Cameron Payne, you got Nicholas Batum, you got the team around Joel Embiid actually has catch and shoot guys, actually has guys that can catch the ball off of a Joel Embiid kickout from a quadruple team. And they can shoot the three and they can hit the three at a high percentage. And they got some, they got some combo skills. They can do some things on the perimeter. You know, when people argue Joel B can't lead a team in the playoffs, he always folds in the playoffs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Every year, at least, at least what I feel like now, I might be a Homer. I might be a Joel Embiid apologist. I don't know. But every time I feel like, Joel Embiid gets let down by the rest of his team. I feel like he's always playing through injury in the playoffs, giving 120,000% on one leg with a broken face and a dislocated thumb and whatever else it is, and nobody else ever steps up. So I do feel like this team has the best chance to actually step up when Joel Embiid gets quadruple teamed in the playoffs. And the only real elephant in the room is Tobias Harris.